another word from the word. What on earth is going on? Why so much evil and confusion when God is good, when there is a God? Now, I'm not going to try and get into all. <laughs> Who could? But there is enough order in creation that we see day to day unfolding that technology can be developed humans can live can have a relationship so there's enough goodness but why all this wrecking it so how do we believe in a god who's good if everything is not good or is he just not powerful enough so we talked about in that first word from the word on um, what nurse is going on about how evil has the upper hand or right right now. But God set it in motion. God is at work and God will set all things right in Jesus Christ our Lord. And basically, that's the part two. What nurse is going on? Jesus is being revealed because he's the one we get to need to know and it shouldn't be that much of a shock that really a person is at the center of all reality because we know as persons any meaning and morality has to do with our personhood our connecting with other persons our choosing to love or not love that consciousness and sense of self that ability to think feel and choose personhood that it's derivative from God is what we Christians believe but it just makes sense that at the center of reality at the center of God is relationship is personhood father son and holy spirit creating in his image God who's three in one, human beings, so that we're invited in to relationship. But we have chosen against God to fall. Evil has been obeyed. We have become slaves to evil, as we talked about last time. So Satan has authority that we've passed over. But Jesus has died. He himself sinless, so victorious over death, risen, raised by God. And showing in that resurrection that he is the one sent from God. And as Paul puts it, when he's talking to the Athenians, making known the gospel to them for that first time, Acts 17. So talking to those who haven't known Jehovah God, the God of creation, who made himself known to Abraham, to the people uh, through Abraham, rescued by God through Moses, given a nationhood given his law, given the right to King David and way to show the world, given your sacrificial system so that we could know closeness with God through blood sacrifice. These Athenians don't know that. They don't know that history. That's a law like us right now. Uh, we've kind of gone back to the not knowing the Judeo-Christian God or the Judeo-Christian ethic and just those values uh person had and they've kind of gone whack because there's no relationship with god modern western culture is trying to get its meaning in person without relationship to god whereas god is revealing who he is and what life is about through jesus christ so paul talking to the Athenian, said the god who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands as if he needed anything I'm sure and God did this he made human beings so that people would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us for in him we live and move and have our being now People made gods and were looking for their own purpose and setting up their own kingdoms of what's right and wrong, you know, from the history of scripture and just from knowing history and knowing people. 
In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all by raising him, Jesus, from the dead. So Jesus is, is revealed as the judge who is to come by his resurrection. So how important it is to look into those proofs for the resurrection, to remember this is at the core. But that is Jesus himself, choosing to be one of us and now raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. He is the one being revealed as the center of reality. If we go to Colossians, the end of chapter one, there's this incredible reveal of who Jesus is, but he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And that firstborn doesn't mean uh, that there was a time when he wasn't and then he was born like a human being born. It means the rights of a firstborn. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He's the center of everything. Everything is for him. And some things right now don't want to be for him, whether we're talking principalities and powers or people, or even this poor, sad, struggling earth. We're told in Romans 8 about it. all creation is groaning, suffering the pains of childbirth. Something good is coming. But the uh, pain is ripping through our earth. But something good is coming because Jesus, the one for whom all things were created and through whom all things were created, we hear further in Colossians 1 and we hear about it in Hebrews 1, that in these last days God has spoken to us by his Son, for whom he made all, who is the heir of all things, and through whom he made all things all for Jesus, and he's being revealed as the one. And what is happening with that revealing? We're told in Luke 2, in Luke 2, <laughs> uh, verse um, 34 and 35, and the baby Jesus is presented in the temple. God reveals through his prophet Simeon, who is this? And Simeon says, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Hearts are being revealed. God created people to seek him and perhaps find him as we just heard the Acts. We were made for relationship with God, to seek him and know him, to explore, adventure with him, create with him. But we fell from that, and now the seeking is first and foremost because we do not naturally know him. We need his help. We need to see Jesus. And as we hear about Jesus and his way of love and how his way of conquering was to lay down his life, to suffer accusation and cruelty, mocking and death, are we willing to say, that's the Lord? That's my Savior. I'll walk with him if that's how he's going to lead me, to lay down rights. Because we're told in Philippians 2 how he, he was God, but he didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, held on to. But he laid it down. He emptied himself and poured out himself and became humbled unto death, even death on a cross. Jesus laid down all rights. The great, good, life-giving purposes of God. Are we willing to be identified with him? Hearts are being revealed. As Jesus is held out, it's shown. Are, are we willing to say, yes, that's my Lord? And walk with him however he leads us. Yes, we're raised with him. But in this life, as the groans are being suffered, and the prince of the air, and the prince of this world is having its way here and there, are we willing to say, Jesus I'll do what you do. I'll say what you're saying. Jesus, just as Jesus himself only did what he saw the Father doing and only said what he heard the Father saying. Hearts are being revealed because many say, nope, don't want that God. Lord, over my sexuality, no way. 
Lord, over my life that I can't put money first or using my gift first, because all we hear about is to be true to yourself. And if it's in your heart, do it. It's like, no, there is garbage in my heart. Yes, there's good in there. The image of God is still there. But genes have been wrecked over generation after generation, over just nasty mutations, but also our genes are affected by what we choose and the generations before us have chosen. So no, not just what's in my body, in my heart, but not just Jesus, who is the center of all things, the true one, the beautiful one, the right. There is where I see what righteousness is. There is where I see what real goodness is. And those who are told to seek honor and goodness will be rewarded. We're going to respond to Jesus on the throne when he's revealed on the last day. We are going to bow and joyfully say, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, but others will be forced to me, resenting and crumbling as your Lord, and they will be, go, be going with Satan, removed from the Lord's kingdom. We're told in, in Matthew 13, Jesus himself talking about that final time, that he's going to send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. But if we are willing to admit now, I need saving, I have done evil, I think evil, I choose evil, forgive me, you are my savior, I do, I do accept you, I do say yes to your salvation. Then we're going to be those who are brought into the kingdom where no more evil is, no more tears, no more confusion, no more meanness. But Jesus is Lord and those who are willing to love him. I often think of it as the Barbie and Ken understanding. God created people. He didn't want a robot. He gave us the ability to choose. And I think, I'm, you know, with, when I'm doing it with kids, I hold a Barbie and a Ken. Whack, whack, whack. Choose an evil. I'll be queen. I'll be king. Follow me. Do what I do. Do what I do. <sighs> God didn't want dolls that he played with. Robots who could only do what he wanted. He created you and me and you can choose. And unfortunately, he chose that battle of wills, that battle of who's first in my kingdom. Everybody serves me. And it's to those who are willing to say, your kingdom, Lord. I love your goodness. I want that righteousness. I need your love. Teach me how to love. How do I love myself? How do I love others? He welcomes us in. He gives us fresh life, that seed of the resurrected life starting now, and then able to be Full grown, full blown, coming into his kingdom. Romans 8 27. That those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. We can be Jesus' brothers and sisters, <laughs> babes again, growing up in a whole new way in Jesus' household. Our big brother who loved us enough to die for us and is giving us his life even now by his spirit as we choose to change him. So brothers and sisters, that's what's going on. Hearts are being revealed. God doesn't immediately always give us the good thing he's promised because it's as we wait, our hearts are revealed. What do we love more, him or the thing we want? Hearts are being revealed. When things are hard, will you choose love? Will you choose Jesus? Or are you just going to choose yourself or the quick way? the easy way. Help us, Jesus. Let your heart be revealed. When it tempted to be sore and grieve over evil, tempted to run out and try to force by an evil way or a less good way, even just by saying you have to do it my way because this is what's in scriptures, even, well, it also says, as Jesus said to the devil, he said, it, it's also written. So we need to wait on the Lord and grace and love say, my Savior was willing to die for me and be reviled and mocked and gave up his right to be right to those who didn't know or didn't want to know the truth. Jesus said, all those on the side of truth come to me. Let's just come to him and wait on him, even now in this horrible time of COVID. <laughs> it just seems there's so much, so much we can't be sure of, so much that seems mean, so much going down. So many people are choosing to hate and blame. And Jesus said, come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden. 
I'll give you rest. And he says, I'm the good shepherd. I'll lead you. I'll make you lie down in green pastures. I'll restore your soul. Let the hearts are revealed. Who would he choose? And we just have to accept that the Lord himself is willing to let evil predominate in different places at different times and different hearts. And we have to. We have to just say, Lord, do you honor Pray for them to choose you. Pray for more of his kingdom. Pray. But just accept hearts are being revealed. And until Jesus, Jesus comes again, this is what's happening. So glory to you, O God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.